Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F124 mod career mode here with Scuderia Ferrari driving as Charles Leclerc. Last time out, we were down under at the Australian Grand Prix. Ironically, the race were actually at this IRL race weekend, uh, and Ferrari fans, let's hope real life is not anything like what we had in Melbourne here in, the, in this career series, because it was, well, it was pain, and it was maybe some Ferrari realism. No! 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 What happened? What happened? Lost power. I think the turbo exploded. Huh? We'll come back to you. Oh, we really are living. We really are living a, a viciously, viciously realistic simulation of Scuderia Ferrari career. Yeah, so an engine failure there means that we are sitting P6 in the Drivers World Championship, although in this uh, alternate 2024 year, Max Verstappen is not having an amazing start either. What, you know, what a championship prospect this would be if this was like real life. Sergio Perez, P1, he's the lead Red Bull. Verstappen's even lower than us in P7 because he's had such an awful run of luck to start the season off. Hamilton is actually doing very well. The Mercedes up there in P2 and our teammate Carlos Sainz is the one Ferrari with a race win to their name in third place but um, yeah I, I mean we can't really do too much about what happened specifically last episode with the engine failure that is out of our control it was the control electronics um, so a bit of a rogue component to, to fail I thought it might have been the turbo or like the MGK uh, as typically that those are the ones that go first but control electronics is a very out there one so put, it makes it even worse somehow uh, that that was the one that failed. So with that, following an engine failure, we are going to focus a little bit on reliability. I mean, to be fair, we did purchase one upgrade on reliability already, uh, you know, uh, a pre in a previous episode, but we're purchasing another one then, and then we continue to maybe upgrade the car in other areas. With the engine power, we've got three upgrades on the chassis coming through, and we'll continue to upgrade that, because you can see we're actually lower than McLaren and Mercedes at the moment here with Ferrari, so that does need to improve. Aero, I did want to improve straight away, but we had to wait for one cycle of R&D points, but then we could purchase the next set of front and rear downforce upgrades that should get us nearer to Red Bull Racing. And all of those upgrades that were scheduled to come in before the Imola GP did come in. No failures on the upgrades, and it means tangibly on the R&D chart, in theory, we should be level pegging with Red Bull. I mean, already, you know, in the episodes gone by, we've had the pace over one lap, kind of like Ferrari, you know, the, the, the case has been for Ferrari in the last year or so. The pace is there on Saturday, not so much on Sunday in terms of we haven't converted various pole positions as Leclerc to race wins. But now with the R&D actually there in game matching Red Bull, maybe this is it. You know, it's an Italian Grand Prix here in Imola. Is this the one where we can maybe try and go for that pole position first of all, and then hopefully uh, convert it to a race win? Let's see. Uh, first of all, we're going to do the first part of the job, which is actually maybe getting on pole position or getting onto the front row. I'm quite confident, you know, there's something about this Ferrari car driving as Leclerc. I mentioned it before, but honestly, it actually is making me a better qualifier just driving as him. I don't know what it is, you know, in, in the My Team series, we, we can't qualify very high all the time, but there's something very easy about driving this Ferrari car. I don't know whether it's because you know, it's like base performances and, you know, I've always maintained the maxed out my team cars all feel a bit broken because it's kind of pushing the boundaries of the physics engine. Whereas when you come down to earth to normal base cars, it always feels quite natural to drive. But it just may be the actual Ferrari, you know, with the performance mod we've got, we've actually, do, we've actually done quite a good job of modding it quite well to be very good over one lap as it is in real life. Because right now we are P1, provisional P1. We made a mistake stake on that second run though where you saw uh you know through that chicane and you can see on the top right we're down by two tenths because we went far too deep into the chicane but uh looking at it i think the staff and signs have already set their second laps and they did not improve so yet again it is another pole position for us driving as Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. But look how close that is. That is unbelievable. Two tenths covers the top five. 
Uh, 0.080 seconds covers the top four um, and even less between ourselves and Max Verstappen. That is bloody mental. If it, if only real life was anything like this in terms of how close that is and then also how the championship so far has gone because, yeah, this would be incredible to tune into. And for the first time, though, Verstappen on the front row. So could he be trying to kickstart his season here? I'm hoping not. I'm hoping that we can finally try and convert this pole position to a race win. It's an Italian Grand Prix. We're driving the Ferrari. It just seems like it's meant to be, doesn't it? Well, we're going to find out as we go to five red lights to this Imola Grand Prix. Lights out. And we're underway. It's a bit overcast here, but the rain is staying away. But Verstappen very much is on our case on the right-hand side there. The Mercedes having a little look on the inside, but ultimately it's the Red Bull we're focusing on. And Verstappen is round the outside. He's over the curb. He's gone very aggressive at the start. And it's paid dividends because the Dutchman is into P1, we just couldn't hang it through on the inside there. And now we're actually side by side with Russell, who's being an absolute nuisance. We dip a tire into the gra uh, gravel because I couldn't make the turn, basically. Russell being there on the inside meant that I had to open up the steering wheel to give him room. And I just physically couldn't even make the corner with the amount of speed we're taking as well. So dipping a tire in to the gravel trap, not ideal, bit skatish on the rear as we end lap one down in P3. The Leclerc curse continues, but we're <laughs> inches away from the wall and we are committed to re-overtaking Russell to get back into second place, to ultimately get our head down and chase after that red ball. It's the first time, really, Verstappen's actually looked like his actual self in real life, leading the way out in front, but he's not broken DRS. We're back under him, and clearly this far, he's actually got a decent amount of pace. The upgrades have clearly worked a treat as we can take the fight straight to Verstappen almost immediately as we now jockey for position through the next left and right right-hander and Verstappen unfortunately for us does not blink whatsoever in that defense he stands firm on the inside now to the outside for the next corner but it's actually uh, beneficial for him to be on the right hand side there because he just completely squeezed this out onto the sausage curve we get oh so close to maybe making contact with him as we desperately go late on the brakes through into that hairpin style left hander and uh, we're gonna have to fight for another day lap four on to five and once again getting into that slingshot with DRS this time I feel like we have a bit more overspeed to maybe make that move we're saving ERS on purpose in case we can't get this done once again through this corner as we're on the outside again almost like deja vu here as Verstappen uh, hobbles over the curbs and yet again swipes across us on the exit but this time we go to the outside for the next left right and we're going to be in a better position to awkwardly put Verstappen under pressure he's dipped a tire in the gravel but through goes George Russell what what where has he come from? George Russell, the man from Kingsland, has just made the double pass on myself and Verstappen. Incredible stuff, but we have re-overtaken George. He was very slow up the hill in the Mercedes, and that's because we also saved DRS. Remember, we saved DRS fighting Verstappen, and it actually came in handy to re-overtake Russell, but it won't matter. It's a bit futile, because now on lap six, even though I'm deploying all the way down this straight, that DRS DRS is so efficient for the Mercedes and Red Bull that it's a double overtake. They both overtake me from, uh, from either side and my battery was basically doing a, doing niche. It was doing absolutely nothing there as the DRS was so powerful. Verstappen's defensive into the chicane as uh, he knows how dangerous we could be at that corner. Very much like Leclerc in real life. I'm very good at chucking it through but let's try and avoid what Leclerc did uh, to, what was it, two years ago and spinning it at the chicane. We're doing well so far as we just keep it tucked up near to Verstappen's rear end and looking for that exit to maybe make a move but unfortunately Verstappen is pretty quick himself off that corner and I think he's going to be going for a move surely on Russell. Russell has no defense. He's kind of a sitting duck and we're gaining but we just don't have anywhere to go. I, nah, I nearly thought about sticking it down the inside there of Verstappen but 
I think it just would have ended in an absolute calamity. So instead, we've taken the cautious approach here on lap seven, and we're just looking to overtake Russell round the outside, and this time actually managing to go round that, round that right-hander, unlike on lap one, of course. But Verstappen leads once again, and as the sun comes out here in Imola, it is our turn to once again try and make this overtake towards turn one. Verstappen! Ho, ho, ho! He is playing dangerous with the amount of room he's giving us, but we make the move on the left-hand side that time in a dramatic fashion as he uh, squeezed us towards the grass. We're up into P1 now, but it's time to make our pit stop then for the race on lap eight. Verstappen's in with me. Perez stays out. Russell as well. Uh, Lando Norris is in. Piastri stays out then. So various teammates coming in now. Not some others staying out, but we have made a good pit stop. 2.2 just out ahead of Verstappen, but... He, oh, what the, he's on softs. Verstappen's on softs. We're on hard tyres, and the man we're directly fighting for P1 is on soft tyres. Um, uh, that is either 300 IQ for Red Bull, or that is a calamity of a strategy cock-up for us at Ferrari, which I wouldn't be too surprised about. But to be fair, Lando Norris in the McLaren is on hards as well. So this well just could be a very aggressive strategy call from Red Bull. Are they really that cocky that they think they have that much pace that they can outdrive the tyre wear that will eventually come to the soft tyres by the end of this race? I mean, initially right now, though, the problem is Verstappen is going to be quick no matter what on the fresh soft tyres. And he's powering through with ease on the inside. He's up into P11. Obviously, will be a net P1 because we're fighting for first place. And oh, no. Oh, we made contact with Lando Norris. Where did he come from? I did not see Lando there at all. We've tripped over the McLaren. And now we've lost about three seconds to Verstappen. Lando, we can be world champion, I said. Please, Lando. Lando! 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 Oh, that was frustrating. That was frustrating. But uh, we've got to move on now. We're down to P4. We've actually fallen behind Russell. And Perez has made the overcut work. And he's ahead of Verstappen. But look at this. Lap 11. Perez leading the way. He got the overcut on Verstappen. And he's... He's, he's holding up Max, that's what he's doing, and he's on hards, Russell's on hards as well, so Verstappen's actually just the only individual who's thrown the dice, so even Red Bull themselves, you know, they, they've gone with the usual hard tire with Perez, so this must be a strategic call just from Verstappen's side of the garage to go on softs, but right now Perez is holding up Verstappen, he's on hard, so he's going just as slow or quick, however you want to see it, as me and Russell. So this is uh, really good for us because we make a very, very aggressive pouncing overtake on Russell on lap 11. That was satisfying. That was really good round the outside from us as we get up into P3. We've set the fast half of the Grand Prix because we've still got a great pace here in this car. And at the moment as it stands, Verstappen can't unlock the pace of the soft tyres because he's got his teammate holding him up on the hards ahead of him. But later into this race, lap 12, Verstappen is eventually going to make an overtake round the outside to get into the lead. But the hope is maybe by now those softs have just worn enough where he's not got that outright pace. And actually, to be fair, you know, uh, outside of that, Perez is actually just coming back at him and annoying him to hell. And Perez is back into the lead. So Perez and Verstappen basically uh, swap positions every single single lap up until here on the second last lap going to the final lap Perez leads again Verstappen's in second uh, oh no oh no look at the bottom right look at the bottom right our fuel mixture stock on lean. That's an engine issue. I can't. I, I physically can't move the menu, the heads-up display, to the, the fuel mixture. I can't change that. It's stuck on lean. This is not happening. I would. Oh my god! Look at the pace this happen has. We both have DRS. I'm deploying battery, and we're just not catching him whatsoever. Even though we've got the better engine here in the Ferrari. Uh, with the R&D we've done. Oh, this is just a crap. I was coming into this final lap thinking, you know what? This could be a biblical scene. This could be biblical scenes. I think I've timed this correctly where Perez is still holding up Verstappen. Could I make a cheeky double overtake on both Red Bulls on the last lap to make some biblical race win for Leclerc, for Ferrari at the Italian Grand Prix? And instead, no. 
And instead, no. Look how slow I am up that hill. I'm losing time every single mini straight because this is how slow the lean mixture is and we're stuck on it. I can't change it. I'm, I'm moving the menu about and uh, I can't get to it. It's still, how is it stuck for this long? This is unbelievable. Once again, we're gonna get a pole position and we're not going to convert it to a race. We are literally simulating such a realistic career of Leclerc and Ferrari here. This is unbelievable. This should have been our race. This should have been our dramatic last lap overtake, double overtake on the Red Bulls for the win on Italian soil. And instead, it's third place. I mean, it's not the DNF we faced last episode, so it's not as painful, but it still feels as painful in some way, if you know what I mean. And Carlos got the driver of the day. How did he get driver of the day? I got on the podium. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalize on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Sergio Perez, surprisingly, is the man of the hour in this championship. He's dominating things, and we just cannot get some luck. Maybe next time. Guys, if you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I will catch you guys around. Goodbye.